seems like days I've been playing on the edge. I've never been this sick before. This is where you cut in the flames from my growing up. Flames, man, flames. Through those flames, we'll symbolize the rebirth. We'll do some Phoenix poetry, and then we'll tie Phoenix in with spiritual rebirth. And then hopefully by then, the real deal will happen as well, but we can uh, symbolicize it on film. Well, who would know how to do this but me? Daryl, Weaver of Dreams. Beautiful imagery. Capture my soul. Isn't that what true film is? Capture the spirit of the thing. Capture my soul. Smoking pot leads to harder drugs. Actually, I don't think anybody who's young should be involved in drugs. You should be actually, I think, like even older than 21. Save it for your 30s and later after your first divorce or something. Get some life experience. Starting with pot when I was a kid, I thought I was looking for an answer and I'd find it by expanding my mind. With LSD and marijuana. And then I tried MDA and mescaline pretty much every prescription thing. I remember one night I spent lying on the back driveway just, oh God, was I sick and took the wrong shit, eh? Turned out to be a high potency diuretic and I shot it. You thought they were speed pills. <laughs> Fuck, was that awful. It's a wonder I'm alive. I feel like I've been pulled back from the claws, the clutches, perhaps even walking in the arms of death many, many times. Thank God. I think I'm very fortunate. I think there's a reason why I'm still here. Because I certainly haven't done much myself to keep myself alive. So I'm, I guess I'm still looking for that reason, just like I think most people should be. It ain't in fact in order to 20, 40 hours a week and just living a status quo life, man. There's a lot more shit going on in the world than that. A lot more shit going on in a person's heart than that. So my friend, tell me to write down stories about my day, little things like that, as if my day is going to bring about enlightenment. I'm a traveling enlightenment salesman, I'm a teacher, I've been a teacher on a long teacher vacation. I am a junkie, but I am a junkie who is forever struggling with himself, fighting himself. I cannot accept being just an addict. I tell you, I'm trying, I'm trying real hard. It's just been my time, I'm doing dark. My family is what's important to me. My old mom. My young bird. This is my little boat. This is the most beautiful piece of uh, spirit. And the most beautiful flesh I can possibly imagine. Just a little living spirit. He doesn't have a very big brain or nothing, but he's got a big heart. It's free to fly everywhere he wants. My other bird overdosed. And what happened? Well, the other bird got into my morphine. I was fixing here at the kitchen table, and I had the pills on the table, took my shot, and uh, buddy uh, ate one of my tablets. I thought uh, sick I put them all away. Three days. I've seen a 250 pound man almost die from 100 milligrams and a little bird this size, three days. Of course, the bird was forever, you know, up against the skin, under the shirt, myself, or my mother taking care of him. He deserved that kind of care. Part of the family. When you're part of the family, you're part of the family. You come in alive, you go out dead. Yeah, mix 
to the sector here, people that there was no Holocaust. I was right close to me there, the Holocaust. They bombed that train, it was soldiers pushing out the blood, walking for God knows how many miles, bleeding our feet. Blisters, the soldiers, they were having the blood coming out from their butts. The daytime we were supposed to hide in the bushes and at night go. Not to be seen by the, uh, the Anglo-Americans. And they took us quite a while, three days, four days. I don't remember exactly, but we finally got to the Auschwitz concentration camp. And uh, they put us to work on the uh, manufacture of munition underground. We were working hours over hours, there was no limit, and the supervisor behind our back saying all this, slow, 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 work, work, work. To be honest, Mathieu, I was, uh, how I should say, naive, a child, it was everything new to me, I mean, like... Well, how many years were you uh, there? In 1943 to 1945, May, we were deliberated by Russian, and there started again the nightmares burning chambers. They were uh, burning the people there, the Jews. And here's the boss of the whole house. Leave me alone. Fortunate honor. How did that work, boss? What? How did that work? I don't know. I don't see no difference. You slept here, though. I slept, yeah. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Watching each other narrowly. The buggers got a fucking beef that she dealt with. Oh, sweetie pie. Uh -huh. Who's the little boo? Huh? Who's the little boo? Oh, yeah, you can't stay away from that sugar. Huh? It's like Danny and his stuff. He's trying to get away. He says, I gotta go to a meeting. He told me what to do when this happens. You admit it? What's up, her stuff? Don't push the man if he doesn't want it. They have all the picture, even the lawyers told the judge and the other lawyer. Just a few flowers, like Christmas flowers, they just have to buy. You know, like it wasn't uh, who knows what. I mean, like what they find down here. Eh? What? What? <laughs> the plants. The plants. Oh my. The dope plants. Yeah. The dope oh, plants. why you went to jail? Yeah. Why you went to jail? Yeah. Went to jail. What about that? Well, the lawyer told him it's just Christmas plants. Oh, yeah. You have to but come the red flower for for Christmas because they were small. Yeah. The lawyer told them they were what? Poinsettias. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who the fuck's going to believe that? To, to, the, to the judge. They laughed. They have a laugh. Oh, laughed. that was a joke, yeah. Not a joke. I mean, they all laughed at the train Yeah, yeah. poinsettias. Yeah. Poinsettias for Christmas is just, just not Better a good idea. in the 50s. <laughs> he told me he was laughing himself in his office when I went out the two days before he... I got to give him some coins, huh? Yeah. Lawyer fees. Could have think of that, how much you spend on drugs, you could have paid him up. On my paper row, when I was 12, 13 years old, I found three or four ounces of hash. Helper found it and I confiscated it. And then what did you do? Hmm? Took it home, tried it out. That wasn't the first time that you smoked. No, so first okay. time I smoked is maybe 11 years old. But I remember my dad giving me shit about it, asked me, "What happens? You smoke that shit and you see the world through <laughs> rosy glasses?" <laughs> yeah, pa. That's exactly it. My dad liked to drink though, so he really didn't have too much to say. He uh, worked 32 or 38 years for the city, never missed a day, drank his 240s a day of his booze, never missed a day, never got into an accident, rose right through the top of his department, 
retired and fucking died a few months later, you know, after a short illness with cancer. Just seemed like, what a fucking ripoff. That's not what I want to do. He would go to his job, he would do, perform his job, come home, bottle again, and go to bed. Mm. Danny? Mm, that's something else. Nightmare, believe me. If he doesn't uh, straighten up, I mean, he keeps on pinch and he can find himself a place. I don't see, it doesn't hurt me. My mom tells me, Dan, I don't want to kick you out. You know, I, I want you to stay here. I don't know. I, uh, I got to get somebody in my mom's house before I would leave her there. I get my niece to, to move in. My niece, Lisa, she could take care of mom. Like she, mom needs somebody around. You know, just somebody. Like she's 75, man. You can't be that strong at 75. Uh, she won't fucking keep a gun. So... You know, like, you, you need somebody around, right? And even a gun. A gun ain't going to be there when you want somebody to talk to and stuff. Um, I need my, uh, I need my own woman. It would be nice to mix the two together, you know, like, uh, if we all lived in the same house there, you know, got two different floors, one I could run a business out of, one, I could have my family downstairs. Um, then mom is upstairs. Uh, she's my best friend. She's good people. She's the finest person I know. How many did you take? I took one, Danny. Oh, shit. They were 18 and then Danny. They were in t 18, I count them, okay? 14, 16. So they're 16 now. So you got 16. Four so I there. took two. Didn't you take two? No, I haven't taken any. Are you sure? I haven't taken any. Don't try that on me. Not, I'm not trying. I know you ought to have a big mouth. Uh, are any of these? Yeah. Yeah, give me ten. Ten? I got them. Can you inject these? Uh, yeah. I took one, and here it's another oh, one, okay? I put two in your pocket. You can have them. I'm just saying. No, I hide don't, them. Danny. Why the hell should I hide them? Damn you. You didn't hide them. I stuck them in your pocket. I Where? offered them to you. There. Where, Danny? Oh, I got them to you. Can I hide them now? Hmm? You probably took them. I took two because I count them. They were 18. I thought two for sure you took it. I gave you. No, you did not. Oh, bullshit, Mom. Did I give them to you, Daryl? No. Jesus did I give them to the bird? No. Okay, I gave them to you. The surface. Liar. Yeah, well, hey, don't, no, 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 no. Not that shit, okay? Because if they're sitting around here, that's not good. The bird could get them. Well, get them right? away from so, there. So, hey, they should be in your pocket. I gave you two. This is a stupid argument. Let's not have it. I didn't put them anywhere, damn you. Whoa. Damn me. You won't get a cigarette, so. I don't know. Not yet. Well, did you make a poop now? Yeah, you did. Okay. Go on. Go on. Poop on the floor. Ouch. Ouch. See, here on planet Earth, the birds are the leaders, and the humans follow them around and wipe up after them. The birds are the real money makers. Humans are good for paying taxes and cleaning shit. There is no help out there, Daryl. A lot of creative people are If I are did asking. not try people to help him or to help me to help him, I would know who helped try more than that. I was so embarrassed, so ashamed, I thought I'm the bloody only one to have a crisis like that. Everybody pushed me back, doctor, nurses, lawyer, detectives, everybody pushed me down. Not to hurt them, not to put me in jail or anything, but to help me out. Okay, noisy. Society is so corrupt. Why don't you sing or something? It's so corrupt. Oh my God. Believe me, that day when I went there, they sent me the nightmares of the bloody concentration camp. Think of it. To go on back, that vision was, would have come in front of me, doesn't matter, daytime or night. What do they do if they keep them in there like... Uh, 
alive, dead body alive. They don't help them. They don't have no meetings. They don't have a damn nothing. They wanted to strip search her. They want to strip search me. When I heard that, I snapped. Open this bloody door. Open it now! But I said that before I even went in to the guard that was outside. I said, this looks like the bloody concentration camp. But when I got in, I heard her strip. I take a punch. Strip search. The car of hell. Got round to the door. The door was locked. Open the door! Where was that at? Where the Jews was, Auschwitz. We were divided by an electric wire. That side was the Jews, and this side there was all kind of a nationality. We weren't allowed to touch. They were saying that it's electric wire. If you touch it, you stay there. So nobody would dare touch that wire. But the buildings, you know, the, the setup, that gave me the impression for the first time in my life after 50 years. Start the nightmares. I had the nightmares for oh God knows how many years. I tried to block them out. Eh? That didn't help when you went there. And that remind me all over again. Oh my God! And I had like an injustice. Good or bad, you know? my flesh and blood in there. You know they could have done it differently. They had me under lock and key. They had me in jail. They had no right to challenge my mother's dignity. She's a Canadian citizen who hasn't lost her rights as I did by going into a place like that, being sentenced to a place like that. They could have dry celled me. They could have done a number of things to ensure that I wasn't bringing, it was all over the idea that I might be bringing drugs inside for myself because I had just suffered for a couple of weeks. That was the last thing in my mind to have crap on me. I didn't want to be the grace so low in me, like to strip myself, to, to see my son, but forget it. Fuck that bad shit. Yeah. What I did, growing some dope, man, those shouldn't even be laws or anything against the law. What a person does in their own right is their own business, as long as it doesn't harm another person. There's no such thing as a crime against the self, and if nobody's suffering, if I'm doing nine months so that because the government don't get no goddamn taxes, you motherfucking hypocrite bastards. Well, oh, well, well I, I'm sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that. But you know what? That might work. Because fuck, that's a righteous indignation. What the fuck is that, you alcohol, tobacco-pushing mother? Dealers of all dealers, the whore of fucking Babylon. I grew a few plants and you robbed me of time? You robbed me of six months? How fucking dare you. And Thank God I'm not psychotic. You have no right to psychotic with a weapon or I'd hunt you down. Thank you God no I right. don't have control over the plague, right? I wish people, yeah, that's a terrible thing to say, but it would be nice if people grew up. And that kind of shit, that's unnecessary because both people are realistic. This is the 90s. People are maturing this day and age and having these arcane laws, you know, when people were so repressed that they have things to point at and say dark and evil. This is the 90s. We're moving into the year 2000. That kind of stuff is like uh, outdated. And I think if you believe and prescribe to such beliefs, you should be obsolete. Well, yeah! Go and get my cigarettes, sir. I'm trying to finish this drink off of this one. That would be okay. Here, you want a volume? No, I don't want a volume. <laughs> and you? No, I need a fix. You need your damn fix? You know. I told you where to go. That's your fix.
Live suspension, only time is the essence. Slowly pouring, so slow, on and on, drag on. But time travels a different frequency, travels different realization. Minutes still seem hours, hours to days, days to months. Suspension, the story. These moments are my canvas, and I quickly, slowly fuse ink to paper in such a manner as to create meaning. Slow meaning in the soft fire, worlds burn incandescently, illumination. The stars and perfections of the cool, sweet night, phosphorescent eyes, blue flames of truth, seared souls forever. Feel the wind, feel the wild, feel the warm water drops burst gently on your skin. Wash the dust of the day, broken dust, going away. Gentle rain, warm, wet rain, fall through wind, begin. New life, life in a drop. And I dive right in to the icy blue waters of truth. My pain, sweet pain of a black crystal piercing the night, sweet pain of syringe piercing my skin. We move like death in the forest. Motion feels like light rain, nothing touches the soul. The air is thick with sour dreams. Scream, you bastard, motherfucker. Oh, did I rip your spine off from you? Squeeze your heart and make you shut up. Let your brain so conscious. Five more minutes for me. I think I'll cut your eyes out. Dig in your brain. I'll fuck with you. To pains and pains. The heart is nothing in my hands. Squeeze it once and a drink but once. That poison brew I ingested. Young girls in cocaine. But even that gets boring after a while. You gotta look inside for your inner child. It's called this. It's called that. All this, but all of these is very old soul. Love my soul and it loves me. What we have is a mystery. My soul looks down through a mask of mind and body. Twisted it is. But my soul is conscious. Hallucination, right? Like the physical reality. But like I've experienced something like that. Close to well, I told you about my hallucinations and stories, man. They were so real. My god. The crystals made the withdrawal easier. 
It's funny how a hallucination can bend with reality. I left the hospital in reality that night. I walked out. When I came back, I was led back. I laid down and suddenly I was transported. India somewhere. Somewhere in one of those desert Arabian continents. Sand everywhere. I was an assassin. I was to do my job. My pay would be food, lodging, and crystals. I know I can let the doctors dead to him. That's just correct. Walked around dreaming. I think they'd have a guinea pig there. I knew I was dreaming and I was just watching. The doctor came, stuck something in my arm. Oh, okay, I remember that. They told my family that I would likely be permanent like that. Eyes wide open, watching, dreaming, talking to people that weren't there, ignoring people that were there. A 15 year old girl, after LSD, tried to kill her mother. I think they drugged me. I think they were trying to steal my soul. I think I got taken someplace I shouldn't have. When I'm looking at you, I see a uh, thousand uh, transparent colored dots of uh, uh, yellow and green and red. And Most other chickens are confined indoors and are given drugs to keep them healthy. I hallucinate madly. I hallucinated about the doctor and this little case with black crystals dripping with opiates which my body was dying to live. Over the night, hey, while I was hallucinating, I just keep spitting. It was just liquid, clear liquid, hey, and uh, the thing with the can was half full in the morning. The cleaning woman accused me of pissing in a fucking uh, garbage can. I'm too lazy to go to the bathroom. No spit. Right? That's like I was dehydrating that bad after I stopped puking. I just kept, you know, salivating like a dog. And that's from coming off morphine. Coming off a lot of morphine. Yeah, fucking sudden, sudden cut, sudden. My connection got broken. <laughs> I couldn't fix it. I got the last hundred pills, they lasted, instead of a week, they lasted about four days because I was in a panic. And uh, when they were gone, man, I was gone. The sun was sort of mid up the horizon. It was hot. I started walking the trail, a few dead trees littered its path and bones. The bleach bones of those who have tried and gone before me. Some didn't make it very far at all. How far was I expecting to make it? I went the other way. somewhere I didn't expect to be. Forest. There wasn't a forest. Hanging sheets of polyethylene painted silhouettes of trees hanging. Fill the room spaced out, spaced out. On the floor, people lying there, fungus addicts. They would take the fungus, the drugs, and they would set it on their sides. And hours would pass like this where they would just lie there. The metabolism slowed almost to nil. I spent a week there without even knowing it. I left when I got hungry. And I don't believe it was just a dream. I believe it was a test. I believe it was what separated me from those doing the Thorazine shuffle every night. 
I was just a jockey trying to kick. I still had my soul, I still had my secret, I still had my power. I awoke confused and weaker than the day before. I stayed in bed. It's a lot safer there. Thank you. 
draws a magic circle. Dragon pentagram with a circle around it. Symbol of power contained. Pentagram is an energy symbol. This is not Satanism or sorcery or anything like that. I'm not very by any to admit it, but I have still my beliefs by my boy is a Christian uh, idea of redemption. It's spiritual. I think uh, the soul is the highest and the best of the nations. But I also think there's tools out there. That's a symbol for God of mercy on us. An ancient enemy have I come across. True heart evil is the anti-death. The anti-death. Down your life. You're a devil. You're a man. You're a man. Now one must work to understand the spiritual laws. No one has stepped ahead and pointed the way besides the Christ. That which governs the soul only by fulfillment and attainment can man and his soul attain. Work through the same consciousness. Man and his soul living consciousness. The same consciousness effectively moving through the same dimensions. And here we are. I had a spiritual experience when I was 18 years old. It stayed with me for a number of uh, well, a number of months. It changed my life completely. It changed uh, it changed me completely. Uh, to describe how it felt uh, outside of myself, I felt as if it was like a, a globe. I've even got colors to go with it, uh, purple and gold spinning through it. I don't know where I come up with the colors, but that's what I thought back then. And it seemed to, like, it was power, man. Like, you know, uh, in my mind's eye, I could see it as that. Not visually, mind you, through the eyes. But in my mind's eye, it also has sort of like a, a halo around it in terms of, like, the sun. It's probably the most single important event of my entire life, aside from being born. My God, man, it was beautiful euphoria. I know it's still with me. It's my perception that's out of whack. When I line that up again, I should be back at the same point. I can't believe there's no soul. Not after what I experienced. Absolutely not. That was a soul thing. Psychic phenomena, intuition, things like that, that is all the realm of the soul other than the physical realm or the reasoning realm. These are tools. Well, myself, I believe that basically the body is just a tool for the soul to get around on a material world such as this. Um, i got nothing against it, absolutely not. I, I kind of like being in the flesh. But I don't think, uh, I don't think that's home. You know, like uh, we're born, we live, we die. If you think about it, prior to being born, we were somewhere. After we die, we're somewhere. It's two out of three. We're in the flesh for one. I don't know what other evolutions there are past that, but I'm sure we'll find out. The speed of sound, 743 miles per second second. The speed of light, 226,000 miles, 831 miles. The speed of thought. I'm there and I'm back and here I am again. The speed of sound, the speed of light, none of it compares to the speed of my thought. Take me back where I belong. When it comes down to the soul, it is only when finite beings, partially finite, contemplate and grasp for the ultimate ourself, 
in the laws of the infinite. You say to each one of us, the spiritual laws. There is man's evolution, man's spiritual laws. Future beckons us, entirely possible. Do you believe? How much do you believe? What are you willing to believe? I am a mediator between man and his soul, woman and her soul. I feel it, a point of evolution. I reason the epri, my why. I took drugs to avoid responsibility. Don't work no more. I feel in spite of them. So this evolved heart of mine, time to spill and thrill. I got my ma to thank for that. Damn, I curse you. Now it's my turn. Enter the hot dream. Heavy metal magnetics. You feel the force around you. Loud buzzing cracks in your ears. A floating sensation. That space between wakefulness and sleep. Have you ever been there? Remember the fear? So heavy you could taste it. Do you remember? Will you ever forget? The path of lightning flashed across my life, rolling thunder across the sky numbly, silently. It's a superficial wound. It's mostly a mess, but aren't they all? Time, the world travels a different frequency than the junkie. It'll come up slowly. It's like taking a fucking triple fucking espresso and riding it high. Imagine trying to do this when you do this stuff. You do, say, fucking four or five tablets, you go blind. Try hitting yourself when you're blind. A little while before this shit starts working. And your pupils are being right away, it seems. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. I could tell a difference right away in your eyes just looking through here. Ah, that's all Hollywood, man. If it was a good shot, it might have even upset my stomach. But I couldn't fucking hit myself. I don't have new spikes and stuff, but I'm not gonna fucking play fucking oil driller. Um, you drink coffee, don't you, buddy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, can you see this massive wall of symbolism without the uh, without the fucking lair? Mm-hmm. Can you pick it up now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I call it Dead Man Rising. That's me when I rose out of my fucking dog day afternoon days. Where? I was a dog, I was a wolf. But I always had my eyes open. And there was a spirit in me with wings ready to fly. The spirit became bigger. And I became bigger. Till one day I realized that if I wanted to take part in this earth, that I would have to incorporate this. And of course, this is a millennial sign within it. It's a sign for woman, which is the ever coiling. I guess it's a yoni sign or a pussy sign. Check the box, that's how it's said. Anyway, in my drug days, I was a dead man. I was Mr. Mojo, but I'm Mr. Mojo and I've risen. I've risen above all that. I have found my own religion within my heart. This is my earth. Not that it belongs to me, but it's part of me. All this, that's the secret writing of my secret name. I can only communicate that whispered into the ears of those I am, how would you say, making love with, since I'm not a slut. 
only a select few get that info. What? What? You want me to mix shit up now? No. Okay. I was running out of info. <laughs> Working on the last few nights with my studies is uh, a light. Light. How to get a controlled environment of light. Um, light electromagnetic fields. Um, I need something that will reveal electromagnetic fields. I think that'll be the next step in my art. I want to start painting electromagnetic fields. Um, there's got to be uh, something. There's got to be a frequency uh, of, of some sort. I don't even know what this is. I don't even pretend to. Where there will be a, a number of different uh, 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 sorts of information, visual information is what I'm looking for. And as long as it's in movement, uh, these different sorts of information can be labeled, you know, one to ten and assigned a color each. And I'm sure that, you know, like all those that are of one sort and one, all those of another sort, they should perform quite a, a ballet of intricate. Uh, um, intricate doings and not doings, uh, in intricate structures and deconstructures. Um, there's got to be something beautiful to it. There has to be. Like beauty, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I'm right here. I am. And I like beauty. It reminds me of my own soul. Anything that reminds me of my own soul, suddenly I know what I'm here for. Uh, City life, the urban dilemma. Man. How to walk with no legs. How to see with no eyes. How to love with no heart. How to create more than a reasonable facsimile of the fulfilled life. Mysteries, mysteries, and more mysteries. Come on, get up, baby. Daddy, let me go. How come you do this? Because you're fat. Yeah, well, I move so much. If I move to the stove, are you going to start cooking or something? Yeah. Uh, here, here, and get your way. The kitchen is small, mister. Love with no heart. For one person. How to walk with no legs. Oh, what did you do? No eyes. Hey, Uber. How to love with no heart. The world is an illusion. Ah, but it's Uber. Feelings are real. That's you, yeah, no little power. Little power, baby. Or is it uh, is it worms or is it sex? <laughs> this old boy, man, how do you spell really? Maybe he's itchy, poor thing. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe he's got worms. My bum's itchy. We laugh at him. Yeah, just wait till we get to your equipment there. <laughs> <laughs> Little menu. I'll make a magic huh? circle and we'll get the bird to fucking money in the middle. Raise the power of energy. So am I going to get five tens? 
jump 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 jump
and then get those fuckers back inside the freezer before they wake up. Pointless. Pointless activity. Rather like getting a job. I've been fortunate enough to live the contemplative life and look what it's gotten me. In prison. Given the gift of being able to think and look where I arrived. In a cage. Financial restriction. I ought to be doing bank commercials. At a hundred thousand a pop. What we need is a magical formula to unite the entire planet into one banner, one meaning, one end, one beginning. We all walk in the same stride, walking beside rather than against each other. What is a magical formula except that, except that which influences the elements, the aspects of the world and according to will? If we have one banner, one will, and we, through our own efforts, through our own will, cause conformity to happen. I despise conformity out of chaos versus even one all-out war to finish it all off so that we, the keepers of the truth, can come together after and live our thousand years of peace. But somehow it's got to come to an end so it can start again. Where we're at now, nothing can be done. It's a slow decay. Followed by putrefaction, rot. Then comes the resurrection. Then will our species rise again. Take the earth without all this petty squabble. It's better than thou. Turn it off. Conscience strike against me. 
I am not one of those who feel not. Only the highest are of us, those who feel as we feel. With force and fire, beauty and strength, leaping laughter and delicious languor. Force, fire is what and how we feel, heat, deeper still. But for those who do not feel as we feel, they are dead, and not of us. Let the dead bury the dead. What are they to me? Arouse softly the brain. We walk out into the day's mystery and embrace it. A self-propelled wheel, a mighty yes. The child crowned and conquered. This is that which is of us, which we must aspire to be, to arouse in ourselves this pride, this strength, this beauty, this gift. for which he is readily fitted. Every intentional act is a magical act by intent. It's called the uh, Bushwhackers Halloween Howl. And I guess how it works is uh, people who are poets or fancy themselves poets end up, uh, we all go down there and we buy a word or two. And from that word or two, each word is supposed to be fashioned into a poem over a period of 30 minutes. And then everybody reads their pieces. I've been encouraged to go down there because I'm fairly good at making it goes up on the spot when the mood strikes me and the fancy gets me. So I'm going to give this a shot and see what happens. It'll be interesting. I did another reading at another place, my very first one. You know, it's a bit nervous and uh, totally friggin' disorganized, man. I was too busy doing blow in the beginning. I got to the club, did another shot of blow, went up to do my thing, and fuck, man, I couldn't tell one book from another, and it was well, a nightmare, truly. So no more, no more cocaine for Dan. Dan hasn't done cocaine for 10 days now. That's one thing about evil I have is that I admire. It has made a choice. I'm an endless friend sitter. I choose to do this and I choose to go back and I choose to go back on this and higher and back and back again. In the end, everywhere I have a move. It's all an illusion. One, two, skinny bitch. Three, four. Two bones I put. Five, six, make it quiver. Oh my god. 
Too many drugs in me for the military service. Do 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 do. Frontline guy. Afraid of putting no one in front of me with me with a gun. I'll fucking just kill everything in front of me. I thought about fucking joining the army, man. I'm sure they wouldn't take me though. But I'm sure I'd make a fucking wonderful fucking uh, sniper. And since I got no problem killing human beings, you know I found a maple bug in the house last night and I had to fucking I couldn't kill it. I couldn't even fucking throw it outside because it would freeze. So I put it in a plant. You're okay, man. You better not let mom catch it because she'll step on you. <laughs> he does not take him normally. He sniffs, but he doesn't remember anything. He comes violent. He comes. And then pour a little whiskey and talk. He takes double not So, you know, one or two damn good shots. He doesn't even know nothing anymore. He doesn't even know his name anymore. And my niece looked at him. And she was scared the way in the condition she saw. She phoned the ambulance. You know, the ambulance came and what the hell he did, I don't know, because shortly I find out that he punched one of the attendants. He smashed the electric guitar, he smashed the started to smash the walls. He, everything he touches, he destroys. I don't know what the hell is happening. Hi Dan, do you feel safer? I, I feel a lot safer shooting you like this, Dan. No doubt. That's what those 27 people in northern Alberta said. <laughs> in this box, I have all the evil in the world. All I need to activate this, this horrible weapon, is a smidge of human spirit. Woe is the day when evil and spirit mix. I just hope that when I'm done doing whatever it is I'm supposed to do, I think it has to do with the arts and stuff. I'm supposed to spread out what I know. And I spend all my time studying all this shit, you know. Witchcraft, uh, mythos, all kinds of weird shit, including Christianity. It's all sort of coming together like the, uh, fuck, give me a, a few million miles of space in a vacuum with no gravity, I'll create the first seven days of creation. I know how to fucking make light, which is a, a nuclear bomb that goes on and on and on and on. I know how to create time, which is uh, spinning the planet and counter-spinning it around the sun. You know, days one way and uh, years the other way, but that creates like a little area where time is possible, where we can be possible. So we have a chance to become, grow, we're spirits, we come down here. This is the only way we can function on this planet, is through flesh. By living in flesh, we can affect, we have dominion over this earth. When I die, it'll be, you'll know I've done something. I've done something very important. But I don't know what it is. All I can think is that uh, by doing my art, by writing my stuff, that comes from the heart and the mind, as after it's been processed and shit. When I do my stuff properly, I don't know, maybe I'm writing a Bible or something. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But I sure as hell ain't fucking hurting nobody while I'm at it. Because my son is an addict, they think that I'm an addict, or uh, he's a seer, I mean, if they give me something, I share with him or something, who knows, I don't know what the hell they're thinking, I mean, like. They accuse me, I mean, like they tell from one doctor to the other or to these uh, lawyers, they tell them that uh, I'm Dan Beholder's mother, I mean, I'm fishing for the medication, I mean, like I'm going just to hunt for medication. Not that I'm sick, that I need it, I have uh, fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. chronic pain, and then from the city hall, the same damn thing, I got a pinch nerve, I fall down. I tried to lift the box, I have a pinch nerve from that. The doctors, they crucified me, they destroyed me, they did not make me better. I never hurt anybody, I never stole. I got my shit through trickery, which I don't think is that bad. You know, okay, it may have made a fool out of a couple people, well, you know, if they chose to look at it that way, but I was satisfying a need. My morals are my morals, and I think of myself as being one of the most moral individuals that I've ever met or no of. I stand beside what I say, I stand in front of it, I stand on top of it. I even stick my dick in it once in a while too. 
generally speaking, I think a rule of thumb is if a junkie says something to you, consider it a lie. Only I'm honest. Yeah, sure, I've done some dishonest things, but I never pulled the wool over my own eyes. Maybe I should keep this check. Fuck, that never crossed my mind. Ooh, how much you got here, buddy? Hmm? I'll tell him I found it open. $168. I think I'll give it to him. $168. $275, but that's somebody else. Okay, if we go right over here, there's a payphone, and I'll phone him right back. Because he's probably right. Yeah, he's in one of those buildings right there. I can, I can have him charged for this. Fucking go for it. King of lies. Because I'm a liar. Actually, I'll tell him the truth later. <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting story. I thought he'd enjoy that. I was fucking around quite a bit with my classes and stuff. And I went to see this doctor and I manipulated him into prescribing morphine. And I also got him to write a letter to the dean, excusing all my past behavior because of a medical problem. But now that he's on the case, he's a part of my habit for three, four months. And then he went out of town for a week and uh, I ran out and went to see his partner. His partner flipped. Well, why is he giving you all this stuff? When I go in there to get my stuff off a doctor, and if I do it right, there's nothing you can do but write the prescription for me. And as long as I answer enough questions with my opening statement, there's really not much else to do. I've never been examined, not for, I bet you, eight, nine years. And uh, I phoned the pharmacist, I impersonated an RCMP officer, and uh, told them about uh, an individual was going around filling prescriptions for morphine that are forged of course, I'm a cop, so I'm talking in authority. Um, I want them to fill the prescription. Don't spook the guy. Um, I want you to do this. If I pick him up now with just the paper, there's really no point to it. He'll be out in a few days, if not uh, you know, weeks, no months, that's for sure. But if I pick him up with a bottle full of pills, it's possession for the purpose of trafficking. We'll get this guy off the street, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell him I have a team out in the parking lot and I have men stationed here and there. There's no way he'll get away. Be nice to him. Give him the dope. Don't spook him. These people would be so anxious to fuck me over that they, you know, even if they didn't have what I asked for, they would give me the same thing in another brand. They're not supposed to do that. Even if it's a different milligram that they don't have, you don't cash it or you don't fill the prescript. They'd give me whatever they could just to make sure that I got caught dirty. So I have no guilt at all, actually. I don't have much guilt about anything I've done, really. I actually kind of enjoyed doing that. It was a thrill, it was a rush, it was a kick. Uh, you can't live all your life on that, that too, well, right? No, either that or I need a fucking easier supply, man, because I'm taking up too much of my time trying to score. I'm tired of living that way. I tried so hard when he was young, when he started. And I have a, a detective telling me, tell him, I have my own three kids, I cannot handle them. So I understood that he got his own problem, he cannot help me. So just bust them and find them and get it over with. I didn't went there for that, I went for I, help. I don't even, don't even fucking talk about the police. Okay. Don't even mention that stuff. Ever again, please. Wait. They're dogs, they're all dogs, you can't ask them for They help. are, they have to the They're nobody to fucking even look up to in any way. How would they feed themselves if they don't uh, run around and destroy places? 
property. We are the animals. There's too many immature people. Savage animals acquire a certain detachment and the ability to do their job with respect. So many of these people are just pigs. The whole fucking society hierarchy is filled with pigs corrupt and rooting around in their own shit. I want to reach out, stir your throat, press your heart, tell you I love you. And if you tell me you love me, slap you and call you a liar. The chips of stone, splinters of bone. Forget the other, we reach for the self, we feed that other hungry mouth. Me, 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 feed me, please me. And in satisfying me, I forget thee. Walk away and step on you, or push me over the edge. Look down, look down on the beach, way down. Do you see that sandy path? Do you see all those bones? They look like stones. They're not. They are the bones of those who were here before you. Ages of forever. There's something timeless. Finished for tonight? Yeah, I just want to go right now. Okay, I'm closing, locking the doors. Okay, will you let me open if I close? It's like 11 o'clock. Hey, don't keep me up all night. You know I will don't you like that. Will you let me up before midnight or should I come up grab some milk to talk about? It won't be too long. You know, I like to, to lock my doors and go to bed and fish, okay? Uh, just lock the bottom. You can wake up at midnight and lock me out if you want to. Midnight, give me two hours. I can lock you out if I want to. The endless night. How long is it going to go, this sherry, for months? We can, Mom. What? Just a weekend here. Weekend? What the fucking hell are you talking about? It's every single fucking day. Not weekend. What do you want to do? I'm going to lock the doors, that's all. So here I am, up all night alone, loser of the night, whacked on speed, who loves me? My friends, my friends, we don't hang and we don't play no more. We visit, talk, examine ideas and thoughts. Shout in the dark to each other and say, hey, it's a long path between here and there. It's so easy to wander off, never come back, never, never come back. All the darkened dreams and the midnight screams and no nightmares come to light. No nightmares come to light. As he lay there, dying in that hospital bed. So I fall asleep, cry and die, whine my way home. Like a lure. On a fishing pole, being wound back after a throw into the deep. My family is what's important to me. My old mom. My young bird. My young bird. Oh. See? You go out dead. What's that? You come in alive and you go out dead. Poor little guy. Didn't have the heart to bury him? Well, not yet. It happened in winter, hey? You know, bury him in the flower garden. That's where he needs to be. She needs to be in the flowers.
rosy dust surly flash the day there is no day eternal nocturnal everything must go in and through all of you soul archaic cryptic writings rebound sublime the dark side leaving you a mark you'll never forget Everything you have faith in is false. Everyone you love is dead. Nowhere to go except under, deep down under. You'd never cop out to the surface. You could drown in a half inch of water you dig. Slow grave death. Slow grave death.